Hello friends, you must be aware of a recent implant design that is meant for the fixation of femoral neck fractures and it is known as femoral neck system or femoral neck system. So relatively this implant is new for most of the budding orthopedic surgeons. So it is better to know whether the new thing is always good or not before they start using this in their routine practice. So it is a fancy implant in the market in which there is a beautifully placed blade inside the femoral head. There is a limited space consuming derotation screw along with this construct and this assembly is a single one which makes it quite compact. And you see there is only one screw hole in the lower part which gets locked inside the diaphysis. So quite beautiful design but does it function really beautiful? Let's see. So one of my friend tried this implant in a neck femur fracture Powell type 2. And you see the reduction appears to be good here you see the cortex is perfectly aligned and here also it is well aligned and the blade or you can say the femoral neck system has been placed in a biomechanically good position you see it is slightly inferior to the center the center will be somewhere here and in lateral view also it is almost in center so everything appears to be satisfactory so before going into follow-up of this case, let's see what are the claims of the FNS or femoral neck system. So the claim by the manufacturer is that there is no insertional torque that results in malrotation. So if you see the leg screw of DHS, it has deep threads. You see there is a good pitch and these fine threads are meant for gaining hold inside the femoral head. And when you rotate it, once it gets purchased somewhere here, it tries to malrotate the femoral head because of its good hold in this zone. But you see the blade of the FNS, it is smooth. There is one fenestration here, otherwise it is fully smooth. That means there is no rotation required for placement of this blade. So is it good or bad? So if you see here, sometimes when the patient does movement, the movements of this leg screw are going to keep the femoral head secure along with the movements. But when the movement has been happening over a smooth interface, that means the interface between the cancellous bone and the blade of FNS, there can be two planes of motion. That means some movement can happen here and some movement can happen here also because there is no hold of this blade because the blade is not gaining any purchase inside the cancellous bone unlike the lag screw of the DHS. So kind of risky implant because of the poor bone purchase inside the bone. So when you place this smooth blade inside the femoral head and the bone quality is doubtful, what will happen? There will be some telescoping movement like this because there are no threads this implant or you can say the blade part of the implant can still glide to and fro in proximal and distal direction. And this derotation screw, it has only small threaded zone. This is not going to sufficiently hold this large femoral head in a reduced position. So the toggling movements like this can definitely happen and these toggling movements can result in something like this. That means implant loosening and sometimes a kind of pseudo arthrosis here. Also, in the implant manufacturer guidelines, there is limited possibility of gaining good compression. They mentioned when you try to gain rigid compression, that means you try to pull the blade outwards, then there will be chances of loosening of the blade and sometimes the blade can come out like this. So even the implant manufacturer is saying that when you try to gain more compression or try to pull it out, there are chances that the implant assembly will come out. So do you think that kind of flimsy fixation is going to hold your unstable femoral neck for a long period? I doubt that. Unlike in DHS in which this threaded zone is going to contain good amount of bone inside the threads and that is going to create a stable construct that will not come out even when good compression is given. So that is going to be helpful. So if you see this case, it is quite unstable fracture. The vertical fracture line is there and there is extensive combination in this zone. The fragment here is missing or has come somewhere like in this position because you see there is increased density in this zone. So when we treat these fractures, we want good hold in this zone and we want a rigid compression. Why? Because if there is bony contact and a rigid fixation, there will be healing in a primary mode that means there will not be any callus formation and the bone to bone contact is going to result in formation of lamellar bone so 
a good compression is the prerequisite in such cases when there is combination in the femoral neck so you see here in this dhs fixation we had tried to undersize the dhs leg screw till here ideally the leg screw comes somewhere over the lateral surface here but whenever you want good compression i told you in initial videos also better to sink this leg screw bit inside so that you are able to achieve more compression so let's see the video you see we are tightening the compression screw and in that maneuver we are gaining good compression you see there is good bony contact in most of the femoral neck and still you have scope of gaining more compression because you see the compression screw is not fully tightened yet let's see the video again you see the amount of compression that is happening the shaft is getting pulled towards the femoral head and the screw is not coming out because of this good hold inside this fenestration that means the deep pitch leg screw which is meant for holding the cancellous bone whenever you want more compression you can keep this leg screw in this mode that means you can sink the leg screw bit more inwards so that you are able to achieve more compression when you tighten the compression screw the compression screw gains hold inside the leg screw and when you tighten this and when you tighten this compression screw the leg screw migrates outwards and with that there is compression at the fracture site so this part will be inside the femoral head while there will be fracture somewhere here and when you tighten this compression screw there will be migration of this proximal fragment towards the distal fragment or you can say vice versa that means this fragment moves towards this fragment ultimately there will be a solid compression and the screw will not come out unlike the blade of the fns and also in fns you have very limited scope of compression in fns you have maximum compression of 20 millimeter only and once this 20 millimeter compression has been achieved there will not be any further compression so usually we get 5 millimeter of compression intraoperatively and 15 millimeter is reserved for the follow-up compression that means dynamic compression that will keep on happening when the patient is bearing weight but do you think that will be sufficient in many femoral neck fractures the union happens with further shortening and with this 20 millimeter of overall limit i don't think that is going to help because ultimately when there is no further compression there will be risk of cut out the blade will tend to go inside the hip joint and the claim number two is that it is compact design with a smaller incision a shorter operating time and with fewer surgical steps and can be used in narrow femoral neck but you see there's no point of small incision if we are compromising the stability and also there's no point of reducing the surgical duration by few minutes when we are compromising the stability you see the deficient component in fns is probably the hold inside the proximal fragment the blade is kind of cylinder that has been placed inside the femoral head it might not gain good hold and as far as narrow femoral neck is concerned we have the provision of pediatric dynamic hip screw which is also a 4.5 mm profile implant so you see this is a pediatric patient in which the dhs has been put still we have space for placement of another derotation screw so the narrow femoral neck can be well managed with the dhs also you can use the pediatric variant of dynamic hip screw so ultimately the benefits of shorter surgical time and smaller incision may not be good when compared to the stability that we need that means good compression at the fracture site the claim number three is that there is high resistance to varus collapse compared to fixation with three cannulated screw so three cannulated screws are the most obsolete fixation for the femoral neck because they don't have any stable fixation on the lateral side the screws are kind of floating screws that have been placed inside the cancerous bone so it's kind of a flexible construct that may fail if the forces are high so fns is definitely going to be better than the cancerous screws but is it better than the dhs no there is no such evidence that the fns stability is superior to the dhs so when there is no such evidence i don't think experimenting this new implant with your patients would be a good thing and last claim that have been made is that implant collapse does not result in lateral protrusion or soft tissue rotation so i told you that the compression in fns is limited that means it allows only 20 millimeter of collapse that means this part 
is able to slide inside the barrel only up to 20 millimeter there is no further compression so just think about it whether it is an advantage or disadvantage if you see here if this blade gets sliding till here and is not sliding further and if the fracture has not united yet what will happen there will be risk of cutout in this zone because the femoral head is going to slide over this smooth blade and with weight bearing this blade may get protruded inside the hip joint while in case of dhs you have unlimited sliding available till the threaded part touches the barrel so you have this much length available for compression when the patient bears weight so just for saving the implant protrusion i don't think it is good to compromise with the compression at the fracture site so ultimately you see all the claims that have been made by this new implant manufacturers cannot be called as something significant so it's up to you whether you want to use this implant or not till now there has not been any evidence supporting the superiority of this implant over the dynamic hip screw so i'll tell you another example whenever you are extracting femoral head in case of joint replacement procedure you try to use this implant this is cock screw or you can say the femoral head extractor you see this part is threaded with deep pitch and when you pull this the femoral head comes out same way the dhs leg screw has threads in this area so it is gaining good hold inside the femoral head but in case of fns you see the major component of this fns implant is this smooth gliding cylinder or you can call it a blade so it is comparable to a smooth steenman pin or you can say a bone gouge so do you think these two implants have good hold inside the bone i don't think so because they are smooth they are not going to gain good purchase inside the cancer's bone the sliding movements can help they are going to slip when we pull them out so in my opinion if you still want to try this new implant you can try this in stable neck femur fracture that means powell type 1 and some powell type 2 but definitely avoid using this in powell type 3 because the forces are high and this blade part of the implant may not gain good hold inside the proximal fragment and also in many patients we have the anatomical varus in the femoral neck and this implant design is fixed that means 130 degree and the manufacturer suggests that when you place this implant in varus neck you try to place it in a non-anatomical position that means you can keep this lateral part slightly out of the lateral cortex and then try to place this blade in a biomechanically good position like in center center or slightly inferior but in an attempt to do so you see what you are doing you are actually increasing the length of the screw that is outside the lateral cortex so ultimately what you are doing you are increasing the stress in this part when this part is inside the bone the length here is very small and ultimately when the forces are applied in this zone the smaller length requires a large force to fail over here but when the length is large the lever arm of this screw will increase and the force required to break this screw at this junction will be less so ultimately you are actually inviting the complications and when we get the ct of the patients treated with fns and dynamic hip screw we see that the bone is still forming inside the threads of leg screw of dhs but here in case of FNS, we see there is an area of lysis or you can say the bone is being resorbed. See there are no thread in this zone and this smooth interface may not result in additional bone formation. Well, the threads are definitely going to keep the bone impacted inside them. So by now I think we have gone through a lot of details in this kind of fixation. Now let's see the follow up of that patient that we had operated. So it failed. And you see all the issues that we have discussed are happening here the sliding has happened the the sliding has happened and is not further happening you see this part has moved till this part and there is excessive shortening here but still the fracture has not united and you see the stress area here results in screw breakage and when we went for ct of this patient you see there is extensive lysis in this zone there is no bone here no bone here and no bone here so 
I told you since this is a smooth implant, there is no purchase inside the bone. The movements are actually getting transmitted from the distal fragment to the interface between the femoral head and the blade. And since there are no threads in this zone, that is resulting in increased bone destruction, blisses and ultimately failure. So just one take home message I want to give. Whenever you are trying to use new implants, try to use in a simple fracture first. See the outcomes of your other colleagues, other hospitals also, whether they are good or not. Do not just believe on the published literature because the patient they are operating might be having different bone stock compared to the patients that you are going to operate. There are many hospitals that have now discontinued the use of this new implant. So it's better to learn from the other's mistake rather than making the mistakes on your own. Thank you. If you have any queries, you can just put those in comments. Thank you.